The following is a presentation of the Harding Sports Network. We are Harding Sports Network. We are Vices. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Harding Football with Paul Simmons and uh, our final edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons. Bison's a 30-14 to 14 victory over Washburn in the opening round of the playoffs and then a 28-9 loss in the game against Northwest Missouri State. Coach Simmons, not the way I know that you wanted the season to end, uh, but what a tremendous season and what I thought was a uh, battle of heavyweights on, on Saturday. That uh, didn't seem fair that that was the second round game because, boy, that, that looked like a, a Final Four matchup right yeah. there. You know, uh, Coach Wright, after the game, his comments, he said, I think there's four teams in our region that could, could be national champions this year, and, and Harding is definitely one of those guys. You know, for me, um, the disappointment is, you know, for 10 weeks in a row, our guys really, really played um, clean football and uh, you know you just want your guys to be able to play their very best game in the end and if you you play your best game and you get beat you can sleep well at night but um, you know we all feel like uh, we left a lot out there uh, we, we would love to have that over again but I tell you what I am crazy 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 proud of these young men of of what they did the season they had I mean it was the absolute joy of my life uh, to coach these guys and um, you know it's Wednesday and it's still really really hard to deal with the fact that we're not practicing ball today those kids were just amazing to be around go back the last two weeks as far as preparing for the playoffs Washburn first and then Northwest Missouri State the support of the community and, and just talk about what all went into that and, and being at home Thanksgiving you know, I tell you, I don't, I don't know why this year was different, but it felt like there was a, uh, an uprising from the Cersei community beyond uh, Harding's walls of, of uh, people getting behind us, whether it was uh, bringing desserts to the Thanksgiving dinner, whether it was financial support, whether it was, you know, I, I saw people in the stands at the playoff games, guys that I love, but that just have never been guys that are families that have come to Harding games. And uh, it was awesome. It was just so awesome the way the community got excited about Bison football. And that's always been uh, a giant goal of mine is, is, is for our stands to reflect um, this entire county and not just a Harding crowd, but people that, that love our young men and, and even if they didn't go to Harding, they, they believe in what we're trying to do as far as uh, honoring God and mentoring and, and raising up young men that, that love the Lord and are willing to fight and compete. And, you know, our guys, they, they really care about doing things in the right way and making this whole community proud by how we battle and how we compete. And so to see the Searcher community come out and, and really rally behind our guys was a, a huge joy for me. All right, we have a fun show ahead and a lot to get to with highlights from the Washburn game, also the Northwest Missouri State game, and uh, we're going to have a good show for you today on Harding Football with Paul Simmons. We'll be back with Washburn highlights right after this. Baseball for me just kind of was the glue that kept my family together, I feel like. I was able to come here and, and get my triple major as well as play a super high level of baseball against some of the best players in the country. There's a lot of options here in Division II with a lot of great ball players and a lot of great people and they make sure that they give you every opportunity to succeed on and off the field. Forever fly, let it ring. Salute the ones who die, the ones that give their lives, so we don't have to sacrifice no. all the things we Thank love. Thank you, and welcome home. Like our chicken fry. 
Back on this week's edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons as we look at the Washburn highlights first and the Bisons hosting a very good Washburn team to begin the playoffs. This was the opening round and, and Paul Simmons the students obviously it was Thanksgiving break but it was a beautiful day and I thought a, a playoff crowd uh, was there for that game. Yeah you know when we have hosted playoff games in the past we've only had one but you know our crowds have not been quite as big but the people that are there have been excited to be there and, and uh, boy, you know, we, we really did have a crowd and we had energy that got behind us and it was awesome. And um, boy, I, I really thought this first drive uh, sent a giant message mm -hmm. to Washburn uh, about the level of physical play they could expect. I, I'll be very honest with you, we, we really felt like in the pregame there were some things that happened with their team that felt very uh, disrespectful. Um, you know, kind of talking down to our guys and, um, you know, it didn't go very well for them in, in that regard. Uh, honestly, we we after the first two drives, when they had the ball and we had the ball, I mean, I really felt like this was going to be a, a five-score game. I thought it was going to be a blowout. And, and give them credit, you know, they, they fought and hung around. Yeah, the defense came out and forced a quick three and out and gave the offense the football back and a heavy dose of Cole Chancey, Preston Payton, Taylor Bissell, and Omar Sinclair on that first drive to take the 7 up. Yeah, and I tell you what, the big thing is the O-line really, really brutalized those guys. I mean, the O-line was just unbelievable. Well, you know, to have the football for 47 minutes, mm -hmm. rush the ball 90 times, those are both got to be records, and that's just a giant testament to uh, the coaching staff and, and really that whole crew, they, they, they were ready to play and really got after them. And it was a, a very dominant um, signature playoff win for our guys. Yeah, the 90 carries uh, broke the previous record of 79 at Southern Nazarene in 2012 with the most in a D2 game this season. Yeah, no, that's, uh, you know, I know Coach Ancy broke the record for cut carries in the game, mm -hmm. but um, boy, just a really, really punishing experience. Move to the second quarter, and Bisons get the football and the toss right here. Omar Sinclair was so fun to watch uh, all season long, and he gets it started here with an 11-yard run. Yeah, Omar had a great, great season for us, and boy, just you know, even in this game, I mean, just the conversions that he made over and over and over again, where there, there didn't seem to be any yards there, and, and he just found a way. Just really, really proud of him. 32 yards for Omar on that carry. And then Grant Ennis with his first of three field goals. And I thought that was something that wasn't talked about as much after the game uh, was the fact that he hit three very important field goals in that football game. Boy, and they all, they felt big. I mean, the one right before the half, it felt like a huge deal to take the score to a two-score game. And, uh, you know, he definitely has become a weapon for us, and we're really proud of him. This makes me sick. Um, you know, we... We had talked all week about the reverse, and uh, but we had guys that just didn't do their job, and, and that unit has been fantastic all season. And uh, you know, 13 the dynamite player, but we we'd love to have that one back. Yeah, JJ Letcher, 97 yards, but we've talked about the response all year, coach, and I thought your team's response after that score was huge. That made it 10-7 at that point. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt about it. The 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 name of the game in, in football, the name of the game in your life is respond. Respond. How do you respond? I mean, bad things are going to happen. It's a guarantee. What matters is what do you do next? Can you, can you get up in battle and respond? What about this play right here? Tremendous play. I mean, you know, we didn't protect up, up front like we should have, and Cole had a guy right in his face. Such a clutch throw, um, getting rolled in the end zone for his first time. Huge, huge swing point in the game right there. Like you said, you know, to go from 10-7 to – 17-7, and you know we never looked back. It was really a big deal. 54-yard touchdown strike. Payton, there too, rolling Wallace. So now it's 17-7, Bisons, and now the defense really uh, doing what they did the whole first half on on this possession right here. Yeah, I mean, you know, they end up rushing for minus two yards yep. in the game, which is unbelievable. I mean, to to beat a playoff team and to hold them to negative two yards rushing, that's a crazy stat. And I, you know, I thought the the defense, you know, the front six were really dominant all year long. And, you know, the exciting part about the D-line is we only had one senior in that group. 
get the ball back. And, and this is a seven play drive that covers 75 yards. And you didn't have a lot of time left, uh, just 347 left to work with. And, but it was a key drive to end the first half. Yeah, we, we ended up managing the clock well, uh, very efficient right there. And um, got the big points coming out of the half. Again, I mean, what a conversion that was. I mean, he broke like five tackles. Mm -hmm. Um, awesome, awesome effort job right there. 35 yard attempt. This would be the final play of the first half and Grant Ennis drilled it and the Bisons would go into the halftime locker room with a 20 to 7 advantage and uh, that felt like a huge play as we went to halftime as we moved now to the third quarter and, and we knew this would be a big drive to begin the third. Yeah. And, and you know, Cole's just doing his thing. It's, it's really surreal to think that Cole has carried the ball for the last time as a bison. He's yep. been such a staple uh, for so long for us. And he was one of the last bisons to come off the field and, and did not have his helmet off. He still had his helmet on on Saturday. I was looking down watching him. Yeah, it broke his heart. You know, when you're, when you're a warrior and you live for the battle, um, when it's over, it's just it's hard to live with now. And you're going to see that uh, you talk about him being a warrior and a, a big run right here, a 12 yard run from from Cole Chancey into the end zone. Bison's at that point 26 seven and Ennis will add the extra point. So 27 seven, the staple of this Harding football team. Uh, you got points there to end the first half and then you come out with the drive 15 plays 74 yards and took eight minutes off the clock that drive. Yeah I tell you what it's and it's just so common to, to get the ball first in the third quarter and really send a, a message drive we've done it all year and, and uh, it's, the guys have, have done that so well so proud of them. Going to the fourth quarter Schurig with a completion to Williams there that was a 28 yard completion and uh, the biggest play at that point or offensively for Washburn, and they would follow it up with a touchdown there to J.J. Lencher, his second touchdown of the game. So 27-7, uh, 27-14, I beg your pardon, after the extra point uh, right here. And then once again, your football team coach with a chance to respond. Yeah. You know, we, we would love to have finished off some more drives and get touchdowns instead of field goals. Uh, I mean, I, it really just felt like we were right on the edge of blowing them out. But give them credit, you know, they hung around, hung around, and got some stops. Um, Zach Smith doing a great job. Well, obviously, what you know, what do you say about Preston Payton? The guy mm -hmm. has been so special for us for so long. One more games than any quarterback in our history, and that record that he holds will be really, really hard to break as far as wins as a starter for us. And uh, boy, what a tough guy, what a leader, what a warrior. You know, he's going to get married, going to be a coach, and he'll be, he'll be fantastic in both roles. He'll be an awesome husband, awesome father, and he'll be a dynamite coach. And he'll be a blessing to a lot of young people. Victory formation there is the Bisons uh, with the victory and uh, winning the playoff game at home, only the second home playoff game, and uh, the Bison's able to win. You mentioned Cole Chancey, the 41 carries, uh, 176 yards. Omar Sinclair had 110 yards in the game, 14 carries, and uh, six drives in the game, 10 plays or more, and uh, forced Washburn to punt on its first five possessions. That was a dominating victory on in that game against Washburn. That was a dominating victory, and really, I really feel like in both games, the score didn't tell the whole story. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, that was a lot more of a dominant win than 30 to 14. And, and you know, the, the last game, I felt like it was a, a, a lot closer than that score said as well. But super proud of that victory. The guys earned it. They, they were ready to play. They had a great week of preparation and, um, you know, just really, really dominant victory. Great job. After the game, Preston Payton and Cole Chancey spoke with the media in the press room. It seemed like he kind of set, he set the tone in the, on that first drive. I think he had it, I think he carried it eight out of the 12 plays. And you guys were just, how big of a deal was that first drive, you think? Uh, we wanted to come out of the game and just go right out their face, really. Uh, we you know we just want to see how physical we, they are because we know we're pretty physical and I think we uh, set the tone pretty good on that first drive. Cole, how you feel? 
Oh, great. Any day we win is, is a great feeling. How does your body feel? <laughs> oh, great. Ready to go back to work. Go 41 more right now? Yes, sir. Did you feel like you guys had how many plays? 90? I don't know if it, 90 rushes. Did they, did you, did you kind of sense they were getting worn down at certain points? Or, I, mean, uh, I mean, you know, our goal, we're going to come at people, and uh, usually they do wear down. Um, but, you know, we don't really care about how they go. We're just going to do us each and every play. If they give in, hey, that makes it ten times better for us. But you had a lot of tough yards. I mean, it wasn't, this was not an it was those yards didn't come easily, correct? No, sir. Uh, right. But, I mean, when you, when you talk about the 92 or 90 rushes, uh, Man, think about the guys in front of me that did that. They're in the <laughs> trenches every play from in the box to out wide. They're blocking each and every play. That's a lot, you know. Those guys, they deserve all the all the props and credit. They grind. They grind a lot. Cole Chancy and Preston Payton there. Coach, I, I wanted one more thing I wanted you to mention about that game. Cole uh, talking there, and you mentioned the 41 carry school record. But uh, that wasn't a record that was just set uh, yesterday. Uh, I mean, you, you have to go back and, and you look to 1978. Mike Van Landingham against Henderson State carried it for 40 times back Tough in 1978. Tough old Mike Van Landingham. And I've been able to connect with Mike recently. And, and uh, he loves the brotherhood. And from everybody I've ever talked to that was around him, he was one tough warrior. And I know that he's honored that the new record belongs to a goal like Cole Chancey. Um, um, so, anyway, yeah, Mike was, a, Mike was a tough one. He was a great old Bison. And that victory would allow the Bisons to stay home and be here for Thanksgiving, and the Brotherhood would be together on Thanksgiving week. We will come back, and we will look at the highlights from the Northwest Missouri State game right after this. A place that nurtures, encourages, and strengthens you. Most people call that home. We call it Harding University. Here, you will be challenged to grow spiritually, intellectually, and academically in an environment that inspires you to find your meaning and purpose. Our campus life fosters a community of people who will become lifelong friends. Come see for yourself what Harding is about. Pursue your meaning and purpose here with us at Harding University. If you talk and they will hear you. Why are we getting killed like this? Kyle's not here. Got caught drinking during the park a couple of nights ago. Really? Yeah. Zero tolerance. He's out for the season. Harsh. Hey, he knew not to drink. We've made that clear to all of our kids, right? Uh, no, not really. Bill, if we don't tell them what we expect and why they shouldn't drink, how are they going to know? Talk. They hear you. For more information, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. Welcome back to Harding Football with Paul Simmons as we look now at the Northwest Missouri State game. And uh, coming in, boy, I, I tell you, it was uh, so much talk about this game. Uh, Coach, I, I did three radio interviews before the game during the week uh, from, from the folks up in Missouri, and uh, they, they knew this, this would be a battle, and it was. It, it was, but, uh, you know, we, uh, we were very uncharacteristic. You know, we gave the football away uh, down at our end of the field you know, twice in the, in the first five minutes of the ball game. Uh, we've started fast all year. Uh, we did in Saturday, obviously, the defense did a tremendous job coming out. You know, mm -hmm. we, we three and out and missed a field goal. Um, and then we came back and gave the ball away again. So, so frustrating. I, you know, I really, I really believe, and I know our guys believe that, you know, if we come out and, and we play well, we win that ball game and we're still playing today. And that's, that's what hurts, and that's what'll hurt for a really, really long time. We did not feel like, hey, we got to play our perfect game and get a few breaks. We, I mean, we just needed to play well, take care of the football. We were in that football game, and uh, but you know, that's a they're a great opponent. They had allowed, um, I think, two rushing touchdowns on the entire mm -hmm. season, and um, but you know, our guys were were super excited and prepared for the battle, and we had a great week. Man, we had a great week. Thanksgiving dinner together was unbelievable. Um, really the whole week was just, it was an awesome, awesome time. And, you know, there was a lot of belief and, and man, belief has, has great power. And, you know, we believed that we're, we're going to win that ball game and, and come back and be playing ball again this week. I mean, I know we rushed for more yards than they were allowed all year and we just didn't make the big plays when we had to. And some things that we, we normally don't do happened in that ball game. 
obviously, you know, those guys are part of that, but a lot of it was just, just wasn't our day. What an impressive drive here, though. After the two turnovers, after the seven points, your football team would establish uh, the offense, and now here's the touchdown run from Omar Sinclair to get to within a point of tying the football game. Yeah. Oh, our kids battled. I mean, our, our kids battled. I can promise you our young men, are, they're not afraid to play anybody, anywhere. Um, that's, you know, this was a special group. Um, I'm not sure if this was the best team we ever had here, but if it's not, it's, it's certainly one of the very, very few. I mean, this, was a, this was a great, great group. Miss extra point, that's only the third one that Ennis missed all year on a windy day. And now uh, here was a big play uh, with the onside kick. Bison's felt like they had the football. I know I felt like you had it from Well, we recovered the football. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, I felt like their, you know, their guy knocked our guy into the football. They said that we touched the ball before it went 10 yards, but we got blocked into it. Uh, again, this is a, that's a play we've made five mm -hmm. times this year out of six tries, and we just didn't get it done right there. Force third down, and Javarius Woods going to come up with a big play right here. Yeah, great play for an old senior right there. Really proud of JV uh, making a big play. I mean, it, I mean, it felt like our defense had their number. I mean, it really did. Um, I, I was really, really proud of the way the way the guys battled. I mean, we, we gave up some big pass plays that, that just will haunt us for a long time. But up front, you know, we held them to 20 yards rushing, yeah. sacked them four times. Um, you know, the front six was really dominant. Again, yeah. they've been dominant all year. And Patrick Healy had two sacks uh, in the game on Saturday. Yeah, Patrick had a huge day. Patrick is such an incredible kid, incredible warrior. So proud of him. Cole Chancey with the run right there. You see a little bit of frustration from the Northwest Missouri State defense at that point. Your team uh, driving the football once again as we move into the second quarter. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, you, you could see in their eyes that, well, they just, they recognize we, we got to, we just got to hang on. We got to hang on. There was, there was very little talk and energy. It was more about, man, let's just, let's just hang on and get out of here. And you get 10 and then followed up with 17 from Cole Chancey, 10 from Omar Sinclair before that. Yeah, we had a, had a new little wrinkle that, that was really good for us, especially in the first half. Zach Smith, coach, I thought this was a great run, a great second effort. Great second effort. You know, Zach is tough and physical and strong, and he's, he just gets better and better and better. So proud of him. And we talked about both defenses coming in, had so much respect nationally, and forces a field goal try, and it's good right here to give the Bisons a first lead. 9-7, Grant Ennis, who had an outstanding year for your team, uh, puts the Bisons on top. Well, then look at the D-line roll. Nate Wallace with a sack right here for the Bisons. Yeah, I mean, really, the whole, the whole front was just dominant. I thought they did an awesome job versus that really, really good O-line. How key were, were these two possessions? Here's an opportunity to go downfield. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a pass. If we hit that pass right there, yeah. we, we go up 16 to 7, and who knows from there? But you know, you got to make plays. I mean, yeah. When you're playing a great defense, you have to make plays. And uh, we, we had chances. We just, we just weren't, were not able to make the big plays like we've done, you know, most of the year. I thought that was a big series, had good field position and uh, didn't get anything out of that possession. But now the defense is going to come up yeah. with another big stop. But you know, right even here. right there, you watch yeah. us, you know, we had, we had two big chances yeah. in the game to, to pin them deep with a punt. Right. And, you know, both both times that we end up getting the ball into the end zone and, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and didn't pin them deep. And it's just those little things that, you know, you have to do well in order to, to beat a really good team. So this is the final drive. There were two stops there after a couple of punts, but now this is the final drive. And uh, this is a, a key drive. And uh, Patrick Healy's going to come up with his second sack right there. Well, yeah, for a D tackle to have two sacks in that game, man, what a, what a guy, what a deal, what a, what a warrior. And set up a second down, 18. And uh, this series, these next two plays were huge to me. Yeah, there's no doubt. Dylan Hendricks with a tackle right there. It sets up third down. Third down and, and about seven right here. Yeah, we needed to stop right there really bad. That, that conversion, that conversion was a killer. You're inside of a minute left. In, fi in fact, inside of 30 seconds left. And the touchdown strike there with just 12 seconds left in the first half. And Northwest Missouri State at that point would take momentum into the locker room. That was a big swing uh, as they went into their uh, two-minute uh, offense. 
11 plays, 80 yards, 226 off the clock, 14-9. Northwest Missouri State as we go to the second half. Yeah, they just made it, they just made more big plays than we did. And, you know, that's we really haven't given up big plays all year. And again, right here, it's, it's a ball that we just kind of undercut and didn't play it well. And uh, that was a killer for us. 63 yards, Corey Beatty made the tackle, outstanding senior. 13 seniors on this team. And for the most part, Al McKellar, your team just really shut him down. He gets 11 yards yeah. right here. Did a great job. I mean, we, we held we held their entire team to 20 yards rushing, mm -hmm. you know, on the day, which is, I mean, that's unbelievable. And held the Northwest Missouri State offense 200 yards below its season average uh, in the game. Touchdown there, extra point, makes it 21 to nine. And you knew this next possession was going uh, to be a big possession for your football team, and it starts off with a Cole Chancey seven-yard run. Yeah, we needed to respond right here. We needed to respond big time, and uh, just didn't quite get it done. Bison's 245 yards rushing to 24 for Northwest Missouri State, as Coach was talking about earlier. That's a that's a great that's a great stat. I mean, we certainly, you know, this is our fourth time playing these guys, and without a doubt, it was our it was our best day offensively, even though we still felt like we left a lot out there, you know. 17 first downs also in the game. Three of five on fourth down. Yeah, this was a this was a this was a blown play. Yeah. It was a uh, you know, I don't I don't know how we we did that. We had a guy kind of break his rules and that hadn't happened all year and uh, very, very frustrating. Those those points would have been big right there. There was a long discussion over whose football it was, and eventually it would be decided that it was Northwest Missouri State uh, football after the punt block. And so no points, uh, and that puts uh, pressure on this defense coach, and once again, they, they would respond and just hold uh, Northwest Missouri State to just five plays on this drive. Yeah, such a great job. Yeah, the defensive coaches, boy, they all the coaches work so hard. Dylan Hendricks with a the sack there for the Bisons, forcing the punt. His five plays, four yards, but now time's starting to get imported. Took 318 off the clock. Yeah, we, we need to make a play. We need to make a play, then we can make a big play. And the kids battled now, I'm telling you, they battled. They battled and battled. They, they, they have such a warrior spirit about them. So, so crazy proud of them. I mean, so proud of them. Preston Payton complete there to Omar, I beg your pardon, to uh, Jalen Spicer. And that's the final play of the third quarter as we go into the fourth. And then you're just still battling, still battling, still battling. Giant, giant fourth time conversion by, by Preston, the O-line, all the guys right there really just, it's hard to watch. I'm telling you, it's hard to watch. It's hard for me to watch these, these guys that I've loved so much. Uh, watched their last ball game. It's just hard to, hard to believe it's over. It really is. Cole, Cole stopped just short of the 30. Brings up fourth down right here. It's just, a, just a few inches short. And so the turnover on downs and now Northwest Missouri State uh, would take over and they would get the football back. Bisons would stop Northwest Missouri State and then Northwest Missouri State would stop the Bisons as we move forward now. Uh, and here's a third down play and a touchdown for Northwest Missouri State, 58 yards uh, to uh, right to Davis. And uh, that was not only a big third down conversion, Coach, but uh, obviously big points right there. Yeah, that was the that was the dagger for sure. Makes it 28 to nine, six plays, 70 yards, and uh, Bison's with the football right here. Preston Payton's going to convert. I know you love Michael Sendrick, a senior, making a catch right there. Yeah, what a warrior! What a what a special young man. You know, you think about being a receiver on this team and underclassman and being voted team captain, you know, what, what that says about the character of, of that young man and the leadership, he's, he's very special. And then a completion to Cage City. 
you know, I mean, sometimes people say, you know, coach, you guys are, you guys are just not, you're not built for a two minute O. You know, we're not, we're, we're not. <laughs> and, and that's why we don't get in it. But um, people don't really understand what it takes to win. And, you know, what we do offensively has been, has been fantastic for us. And, and we would not be anywhere near uh, where we are if we were in any kind of different system. It served us um, so, so well. And, you know, the, we just, we got to, we, we got to stay out of that situation. I mean, we, we don't need to be in situations where we're um, behind late, and we rarely are. We rarely are, but, um, yeah, Billy, can you believe it? I can't, I can't believe it's over, but I, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, like you said, so grateful at this time last year, we didn't have a season. So for these seniors that got to, you know, they chose to stay around and kind of put their life on hold to get to come back and be part of this. I mean, it really was a magical ride to be conference champions, um, you know, to, to win 10 straight games. And just the way they did it, you know, they, the, the passion, the love, the commitment to excellence, the, the selflessness. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you, we don't have entitlement and selfishness among these guys. And that, that, makes, that makes the trip so much fun is because the kids just do things the right way. The, the standard of excellence with our guys, honestly, is, it's, I mean, it is just humbling for me to get to be with them and watch them. And, um, you know, people say, hey, coach, boy, you, you, you're making those kids better. I'm like, oh, boy, those kids, they make us better. I mean, those kids make us better and make us want to be better men and better leaders and make us want to come through for them because they deserve it. They're just really, really special. Coach mentioned a Great American Conference Championship, mentioned the seniors. We're going to talk more about them when we come back. We have more ahead on this edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect, it's the name of the game. Back on this week's edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons. Coach, let's look back to the season. The regular season, Great American Conference Championship, and this team just one point short of going unbeaten, 11-0, lost at Southeastern Oklahoma. And I mentioned to you before we started taping, I felt like the Southern Arkansas game at that point of the season, third game of the season, was the game that your team really got our roll. Went down to Magnolia, 137-6, and then uh, won, obviously, another big road game at Henderson State, 46-21. Yeah, you know, we, we were sitting at one and one, and it very much felt like, hey, this this season is hanging in the balance, and we could go, we could go um, a few different directions. And the SAU game felt like a huge game, uh, but I just I, I wish people could understand the way these kids um, work, the resolve, um, you know, how they handled the disappointment of the. The southeastern loss, which was a, I mean, it was a devastating loss. Just the way it happened, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, and but you know that was really the last close game of the season. Yeah. I mean, the, the the guys just got better and better and better. And you know, um, to beat SAU and OBU and Henderson and Oklahoma Baptist in in dominating fashion mm -hmm. and and uh, was just so impressive with our guys. You know, kind of having their back against the wall. They, I mean, we knew from week two, if we lose again, we're done. And um, 
that's that's what makes me love these guys so much. Is they just said, Coach, we ain't, we ain't giving in. We ain't giving in. We ain't going nowhere, Coach. We're gonna we're gonna battle together, and uh, you know, that's just it's, it's special. Special kids. One other thing I want to bring up: uh, just the second outright conference championship. This group of seniors. Uh, I know you will always have a special connection with them because, as you mentioned in the post-game remarks after the game on Saturday, you were a freshman with them, uh, with, with this group. Just talk about that a little bit. Yeah, you know, I, I mean. A uh, freshman head coach. Yeah, I was a freshman head coach in 2017, which was these guys' uh, first year on the field, and uh, that was a life-changing experience. You know, we went 0-3, and, and then we, we won 11 straight games, and we're a few plays away from playing in the title game. and. You know, most of these guys were there, and, and a lot of them were on the field. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Cole Chancey was a giant part of that. Preston Payton played every snap of that last ball game. Um, you know, uh, Shedrick Robinson was was started the entire playoff run, and uh, just in so many ways, I feel like um, as these guys were freshmen and, and grew up, we grew up together, mm -hmm. and. Um, um, you know, that's the worst part of this game is when you, you get these young men and at the time when you love them the most and, and they've invested the most and you feel the most connection, then you got to give them up. You got to give them up and, and they move on and, and, and go out and if you've done things right, they're prepared to go out and, and be a light in the world and, and uh, be Christian servants and fantastic daddies. and. And, and husbands, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something now, more so than any bunch we've ever had come through here, these guys are going to crush it. They're going to crush it. They're going to crush it in their lives because they're, you know, they're, they're, they're awesome young men and uh, they're, uh, they're ready. You know, they're ready for what's next and uh, I just wish we had one more week. Well, we have one more segment on the show, and when we come back, we're going to show you everyone that helps put this show together each week and how much we appreciate them, and we'll come back with a final thought right after this. Wayne State Medical School has been my dream medical school since I was five. Athletics are important, but so is service, so is research, so is becoming a better person. And we expect you to do well athletically, but don't forget the reason you're here, which is to give back to your community and to get good grades. Graduation is an exciting time of celebration, but also of reflection. You've accomplished so much to be proud of. The world needs you, and now you're ready for the world. Welcome back to Harding Football with Paul Simmons. I told you we had special guests on the set with us. Spencer Templeton uh, behind me. Uh, he always edits the highlights, and also Morgan Maples our audio engineer, and Jill Jarvis is our director. She's with us every week. And Haley Kate Webb, we always enjoy uh, the pieces that she puts together for us, uh, the player pieces. Sydney Bryant travels with us on the road and shoots all of the uh, video that you see for uh, the, the highlights. And uh, we, we couldn't do uh, the show without uh, all their help. Haley Kate Webb, Sydney Bryant, Spencer Templeton, Jill Jarvis and Morgan Maples, and Coach, we appreciate them very much. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I sit here every week and I look at that screen, and by far, this is the best it's ever looked. I mean, it's usually you and I on that screen, and in all honesty, uh, I, I, I dread the show every week because I come in here and it's, you know, I'm, I'm listening to myself talk, but everybody that's involved makes it an, an awesome experience. They do such an incredible job, and uh, I just, I, I feel really, really, uh, thankful to get to be part of such a professional operation and like just like my football program people don't really have any clue about what it takes and everybody that's behind the scenes to make that happen but this is an awesome uh, group and they have done a tremendous job and I feel uh, very blessed to get to be to be part of it so thanks guys
Yeah, and, and three folks behind the camera that, that we have to mention also. Mark Pryor, our chief engineer on the Harding Sports Network. Tim Hamilton is our producer. Coach and I just do what Tim says. And Tim, happy late birthday. He celebrated a birthday on Saturday. And Scott Good, uh, we couldn't do it without him either. Coach. Oh, that's unbelievable. They do, they do such a, a great job. And like you just said, I mean, I, whatever they tell us to do, we're going to do it because we know they're the very best in the business. And uh, to have this level of operation at, at, at Harding University is, is such a treat. Paul Simmons, we couldn't do it without you either. My honor to sit next to you each week. Congratulations on a conference championship, another great season, and uh, 11 wins, and uh, let's do it again, okay? Well, I appreciate that. I, you know, I tell you what people say, Coach, what are we going to do next year? What are we going to do? How, how, how are we going to win? And I just, I just want to say this. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to pursue excellence as hard as we can, and that, that might mean 11 wins. 11 wins, it might mean five wins and I, I just I don't want that to ever become the measuring stick you know what we're trying to do is is love on young men and and raise up Christian fathers and husbands and 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 honor God and um, it, you know we might have the the most success we've ever had and it might not be a conference championship mm -hmm. I just I hope we don't ever become a place where it's national title or bust even though we want to do that and that's a that's a really uh, tough spot to be in, but I can promise you we got a bunch of young guys that, that can't wait to represent Harding University and, and get after it again. Spencer Templeton has put together this next piece to look back at the season, and uh, we hope that you enjoy it, and we'll see you next time. He looks, he throws downfield in the end zone. Touchdown, Hart!